Almost 200 emergency workers racing to prevent nuclear catastrophe. And we are learning more about who these brave people are and what their families are going through. And Juju, I know you've been following this closely. I have, Robin. And if you think about it, if they were Americans, we would know mm -hmm. so much about them, their names, their families, their biographies. It's been six days of station blackout. But these workers are Japanese. And TEPCO, their power company, and their country has kept them on purpose, nameless and faceless symbols of duty and honor. Those still anonymous workers, many volunteers, now loved ones are pulling back the shroud of secrecy on their heroism. My dad went to the nuclear plant. I never heard my mother cry so hard. People at the plant are struggling, sacrificing themselves to protect you. Please, Dad, come back alive. My husband is working knowing he could be radiated, she says. In one precious email, he told her, please continue to live well. I cannot be home for a while. On national television, an email is shared. My father's still working at the plant. They're running out of food. We think conditions are really tough. He says he's accepted his fate, much like a death sentence. The 180 workers are rotated in and out of the danger zone. They take turns eating and sleeping in a decontaminated area about the size of an average living room. Michael Friedlander worked in crisis management at similar American uh, nuclear plants. Tell me how, what their day-to-day -day lives must be like. How are they eating? How are they sleeping? They're probably drinking cold water and they're probably eating military-style made-ready-to-eat packages. Uh, it's cold, uh, it's dark, and you're doing that while trying to make sure that you're not contaminating yourself while you're eating. Their mission is called Feed and Bleed. Feed seawater onto the reactor to keep it cool while steam bleeds away the heat. They are well aware their lives are on the line, but they're equally aware of what's at stake. There was an eerily similar scenario on a Soviet nuclear sub in 1961 when crew members, as a last resort, sacrificed themselves to save a failing reactor on board. This difficult task has fallen to you. Eight died in the heroic rescue captured in the movie K-19, The Widowmaker. That same determination playing out in these Japanese heroes. I can tell you with 100% certainty they are absolutely committed to combating this casualty and doing whatever is humanly necessary to, to make the, put these plants in a safe condition. Even at the risk of their own lives? Even at the risk of their own lives, yes. These men are like foot soldiers waiting for the cavalry to arrive. And we've talked about those helicopter pilots who are risking their lives flying into high radiations. They're the backup. But what these men are really hoping for is that new power line that George mentioned. It is tantalizingly close. And one nuclear physicist tells me it's like the white knight they're waiting for. Well, like you said, this, their sense of duty and honor is unprecedented. All right, Juju, thank you.